All right, here we go. This is my friend Jeff Michalik. That's some good inclusion information for you all. This thing on. Yeah, we're just verbalizing everything that you're looking at. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff Mahalik. I own and operate Superior True Stump and Louisville, serving pretty much all of Colorado yeah. based in the front range. Oh, that's why it's uh, I'm going to try and make this kind of fun because I realize not everybody enjoys stumps like it's I do. I know it's uh, at any point in time, if it's too much, just stop me, ask questions. Uh, all right. I'll try and get through it pretty, pretty smooth. Really? So, yeah. I'm going to go for that. Right <laughs> we good? Everybody good? Okay. Um, stump grinding is inherently That's dangerous. There are things that you have to pay attention to. Some people encounter, some people don't. I'm a big fan of grinding real deep uh, for almost every stump. If there's a utility in the way, I can understand where it's not the right time, not the right place, but anything I can do to get a nice deep 12 inches, 16 inches, 25 inches deep, that's the plan. Stump grinding makes a mess. Let's try and do it once instead of having to come back in two or three years and clean it up, make another mess. Here's a machine doing a wheelie. Uh, I ran into a stump that was buried in the mulch pile, but I was able to get a pretty sweet shot of it because that's not something I do every day. Closer. How's this? Okay, thank you. So, stump grinding can be done with multiple different machines. Anything from a little handlebar grinder. Uh, they have a place, not an everyday machine, if you could avoid it, but they certainly serve a purpose. The small, little 29 inch wide track, 40 horsepower gas machines are awesome. They definitely get you a lot more work a lot quicker, and they give you a lot more depth than some of those handlebar grinders will. Some guys have a nice big machine with uh, lots of horsepower, big diesel engine, grind two feet deep, fit through a three foot gate. No matter what it is, I'm a big advocate for calling 811. Uh, tracker, excavators, any of the ways that you try to do it, uh, utilities are everywhere. As the infrastructure grows throughout the front range of Colorado and everywhere in the United States, fiber, gas, electric, water, sewer, all these things we have to pay attention to. And so many people do not call for utility locates in Colorado. And I don't agree. Uh, very strongly opinionated on that. It's something that you have to do. So please, if you're in the stump grinding business, you can go tree company, landscape company, stump grinding company, please be ad advocating for more utility locates because it takes very little effort to cause a major malfunction in someone's yard. We've all seen the sites, we've all seen the paint. Does everybody know what it even means? Orange, telecom, um, hitting a TV line, hitting a phone line, not a major ordeal. Most of us can survive that. If you hit fiber, uh, the rumors in town are it's an $80,000 fine if you uncover that fiber conduit. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of stuff. So paying attention to the orange fiber line is really, really, really imperative. You never know where the lines are going to show up. When you think you have a nice big spot, maybe there won't be anything and then 811 comes in and shows you all of the marks in all of the wrong places. You gotta work around it. Hand dig, find the line, work safely around it. This mic is killing me, guys. Does it sound okay? Yeah? Don't do that! Don't do that! Trying to find a spot where it's not too loud. Um, electricity phone, TV, internet, most of the backyards throughout the Front Range, Denver, or Englewood, some of the cities where we uh, have overhead power, we get the advantage, but everywhere else it is buried, and it is something that is typically not very deep, so we have to work around it. Sorry, we're skipping around. medium job. Why in the world does that one flag have to be there? Right? It's just enough to make you wonder, what are we doing? Um, in most cases, that's two, two and a half feet above the street. The gas line should be below the street, but nonetheless, it is something you have to pay attention to. You never know where those utilities are going to be marked. 
Yeah, I'm not really. Tons of TV and HOAs. They love burying all these lines so that you are just digging forever. Uh, it's an unfortunate part of the business, but it's something we have to be cognizant of and everyone has to pay attention to. Hand digging. I mean, sure, we can all do it. Most of us don't want to. But when you're approached with a situation where the lines are everywhere, hand digging is your only option in most cases, or you can walk around. Uh, digging down to find the line is the Colorado law. Some of these lines are four inches deep, some of them are four feet. I can't grind four feet deep, so typically after I dig down two feet, we're going to call it a game and go from there digging on both sides of the line, on both sides of the stump to make sure that there's no inadequacies that are going to cause an issue down the road. There are situations, and this video was filmed not for a presentation, so it's not as clear as I wanted it to be, but it was the best I could find on a, on a quick notice. This will show some of the weird things that you can come across when you think you know where the gas lines are. Eight one one. Well, how do you guys don't call? A lot of you guys have different infrastructure than what we do out here. Anything is possible. So power and gas on this side. Um, I need to spend time. There would be a straight line to here, where it would go run the energy you can see. There's the, you can maybe see, power and gas run straight through the yard here. Pretty straightforward, should up there, there's a little bit of the marks. So yeah, straight, straight. Well, here, power and gas come out. Make a very hard right hand turn. Come straight across the top. There's a gas line. There's power and gas. And you run all the way through the line. Where they join up with the supply. So there's no reason for it to be there. No. Well, not that I know. Maybe somebody has information that I know, but um, yeah, that's why I always call. Because you never know. And that would be safe. So just a safety warning for the day. Call it one one. Protect yourself and be the real for. So that's a unique situation. I ninety-nine percent of the time. This stump is going to, or the gas line is going to run in a straight line from the house to the supply in the street. There are situations where it doesn't. I've seen a handful of these throughout Denver, Boulder, Lakewood, where the utility runs at a 45 through the middle of the yard. And if you're expecting what you've always seen, and then you come into this, you're going to have an issue. So please use 811. It is mostly free to the contractor. Obviously, we're all paying for it with our power. Please use it, please, please pay attention to it and respect it because it's a good way to hurt yourself uh, or hurt your customer. Grinding stumps or driving on a side hill. Uh, too many people roll over their machines and don't think much of it. But something like this, that's a 3,700 pound machine. The tracks were sucked in to 36 inches wide and a small brick median next to the sidewalk was enough to roll the machine over. If you're going to cross something on a side hill, go straight up and down. Do not try and side hill it. It may work once, but it won't work every single time. Uh, going straight up and down is definitely the way to do it. Use the machine to your advantage. Use gravity to your advantage. But do not try and side hill because you'll end up like our buddy in California. underground and buried obstacles. This was a chain link fence that was under some mulch on a spruce. 
Uh, it was a six foot fence panel. I'm trying to get it rid of that anyway. It was a six foot fence panel buried under the mulch. No idea it was there. It was about a foot deep in pine needles. Uh, I hit it and obviously sucked it up pretty quick. Luckily, I was far enough away, I didn't get hit by any of the metal, but it could certainly suck you in, especially if you're standing next to the machine, and if you are standing on something, it pulls in, you're going with it. Um, there's a lot of ways to leave this world. Going into a stump grinder is not one that I would choose, so pay attention, inspect your site, look for danger before you start to grind, because uh, this could have went really bad if someone wasn't paying attention. Stumps often end up in front of those windows, right? What do you do? You gotta make a judgment call. How comfortable are you with your ability? How comfortable are you with your machine? This stump was grown up over the window. I used the saw to cut it down a little bit lower and then was able to grind. I used a sheet of plywood to cover the window, protected the window, was able to remove the entire stump without any damage to the building. There was some damage to the foundation from the stump, but try and get away from that. That, that damage was already done. That wasn't from the stump removal operation. So something, you know, use your judgment. Not every job is for you. It's okay to walk away and to, to take another shot at it or pass on it because breaking a window takes up most of your money on a tree stump. Curtains, tri guards, there's lots of ways to do it. I've seen, I used to use four by 12 painter drop cloths and three tea stakes. It's very, very cheap very very portable very easy to use uh, if you have nothing else this is a good way to start a great way to get going it gives you that protection it allows you to protect the customers other uh, people walking around on the street the buildings whatever it is this gives you a defense from flying mulch you could step up and try something like a tri guard uh, they're on display here huge fan they're heavy they're cumbersome, but they don't blow around in the wind. You can put them on a hill. They are great. I definitely recommend them. If you have nothing else, I'm a huge fan of the tri -guard. But there's a lot of cheaper ways to do it. Sunshade material, trampoline material. There's ultimately tons of different options that you could use to make a, a protective system for you so you protect yourself and everyone around. Some homeowners take it on themselves to build their house into a hurricane proof when you're coming to stump grind. I'll never discourage this, but I don't require it. Uh, this guy was very, very concerned, and uh, luckily nothing got broke. Some people only worry about their windows. No problem. Me too. Working in the dust. Dust is something that we see very often here in Colorado. I'll pick a hose and spray the area. It knocks down that dust. You're not choking on it. You can see what's going on. And if you don't make it too saturated, it's not too muddy. So using the water to knock down the dust to give you better vision is a great, great idea. Uh, people grinding crocs in Florida. I don't know if you guys know this, but some people do it and here's a good example of why you should not grind stumps wearing crocs uh, that nail came out of the ground and stuck in my boot uh, it would have went right through my little breather hole in my crocs so don't grind stumps in crocs this was a stump in some roots i got three or four people very concerned with me when i was leaving about what was buried there uh, maybe should have taken out a little bit more of the stump just to make it a little clean and whole, but nonetheless, kind of looks like a body, and a uh, few neighbors were pretty concerned. And that's it. When you're grinding stumps, all I ask is please use 811, please use your head, please look around, please pay attention to any other buried obstacles that you may come into. Don't grind in crops and grind deep. Take the whole stump out. Do it right the first time um, so that the homeowner or the customer has, has a new spot to do it. So the homeowner or customer a uh, new spot to work with. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much for attending. Woo! Hold up. Excellent.
excellent point. Calling for locate before planting a tree so that you're not planting a future problem for me or another stump grinder or whatever utility may be affected by that tree that's growing. Yes, um, hydroback, hydro excavation to identify utilities is great. 1750 is the price that I've been seeing right now. Some jobs that works, some jobs it doesn't. But I'm a huge fan of hydrovax, hydro excavation, um, air spade. There's a lot of ways to get there, but that's a great one. Awesome. Yeah, you know, huge fan. It just doesn't fit for every job. Right, right. Good question, though. Anyone else? Stumps with baskets, I grind right through. That metal is so soft. I mean, I don't worry about it. I know some cutting systems may deal with it a little differently, but um, even with my little handlebar grinder, it's pretty soft metal. <laughs> Baskets, yeah. Yeah. If you took all that metal and added it up, it would be tough to get it to spiral. I've seen it happen where you can make a cut or two and the basket comes off. That was a full chain of effects. For sure. When as a stump grinder, you've done it, a lot of us have, and you start grinding and as you're breaking through the dirt, you see the basket, you see all of the roots that are girdled stuck inside the basket. They never got a chance to come out. Ten years after the tree was planted, that's a dead tree because it never had a chance to grow. Awesome. Well, thank you guys.